Aberdeen manager Willie Miller makes a couple of changes from the side which beat Dundee United in the Cup on Sunday. David Winnie replaces Gary Smith at left back and Roy Aiken comes into midfield for Paul Mason who's unwell. The strike force is unchanged with Scott Booth on the bench. The top scorer is Duncan Shearer with 22 goals despite missing eight games through injury over December and January. And that form has earned him a place in Andy Roxburgh's Scotland squad for the first time. One more good performance could stake a claim for a place in the starting lineup against Malta. Celtic are without Tony Mowbray, Peter Grant, Joe Miller and Jerry Craney, all unavailable because of injury. But Brian O'Neill has recovered from his pelvic injury, so Rudy Vata is relegated to the bench. And there's a fifth consecutive opportunity for the new strike force of Frank McAvenny and Tommy Coyne. And one player whose reputation hasn't suffered during Celtic's troubles is John Collins, one of only two ever presents in the side, Tom Boyd being the other. The current speculation relates to the expiry of his contract in June and developing interest from other major clubs, a cause of further great concern to the Celtic fans. And the referee this afternoon is Douglas Hope from Erskine, who's followed the sports scene cameras from McDermott Park on Wednesday night. And yet another tense occasion for the beleaguered Celtic manager Liam Brady, a really tough match to face after the cup exit at Falkirk last week. The fourth match of the season between the two clubs. And Aberdeen still undefeated. Two draws and a victory for Aberdeen in the Skull Cup semi-final. And all fascinating matches. And this is likely to be exactly the same. So Stephen Wright with the throw. Roy Aiken playing against the club which made his name. Must be so strange for Roy Aiken to play against green and white hoops. Header on, head up the top check towards Duncan Sheeter. But one apiece it was here at Petordi early in the season, then 2 2 at Celtic Park, and that 1 0 victory in the Skull Cup semi for Aberdeen. Aiken with a long throw, Brian Irvin has gone forward, headed back in by Richardson. The referee was in the way of a first time shot from Brian Grant. Day, robbing Irvin. Good challenge by Aiken. It stayed in well. Here's Grant. The hectic start to the match. Celtic now in the counter attack with McAvenny. O'Neill going through the middle. Still McAvenny. And very good recovery was by Roy Aiken. Well, he covered 60 yards to get back and make that interception ahead of Stuart Slater. Here's Collins. Winning the ball back from Richardson. Made a huge reputation, Lee Richardson, since his arrival from Blackburn Rovers for £150,000, a paltry sum by modern standards. Aiken. Cross goes Galloway, allowing Sheeter to dispossess him. He hasn't had too much involvement in the play so far, Duncan Sheeter, but that's frequently the mark of a, an outstanding poacher. He's liable to be around when the ball's in the box at a vital time. Aiken's throw back to Richardson. Good effort that from Dean Jess, reflecting his amazing confidence at the moment. So the headed clearance arriving there at Lee Richardson, and Jess set himself this overhead effort, kept it on target. John Collins and now Darius Dubček. Now trying to play that over the top of Stephen Wright for Stuart Slater. The old fullback is hard to beat in that fashion though, he is very quick in the turn. They'll miscue that from Wright. Richardson to Grant. Collins stepped in. Good challenge that by Wright. Powerful one on McAvenny. This is Galloway. Losing out to Richardson, but a good recovery made by the Celtic defender. Slater towards McAvenny. 
Good return pass. Nakameni again. Trying to go through a gap there between Wright and McLeish. Plenty of effort shown there by Makaveni. Check. It's away by Patalainen. Good ball on there by McStay to O'Neill. Shooting chances on now. Not a bad effort there by Brian O'Neill. It was deflected for a corner kick. No chance, I reckon, of Snell is being beaten by this. He did appear to have it covered. Later's corner kick. O'Neill putting pressure on Irvin. That's Winnie. The only one at the back now for Celtic is Mark McNally. With assistance from Pat Bonner. Jess was slow coming back. Well, the lines were taking some abuse there from the Aberdeen supporters, but appear to be correct on that occasion. And he's head out, cut off well by McNally, who's having a good match in the heart of that solid defence. That's good play. Coin linking with O'Neill. The early cross, the flying header! Paul McStay's effort superbly saved. It was tremendous play from Celtic. The danger's not yet over. A lot of boost of confidence, substantially, I reckon. McNally standing up well. He's been penalised with a push on Jess. But some wonderful play there from Celtic. Getting there to the byline and pulling the ball back from Coyne for Paul McStay's flying header. It was an excellent save and good covering inside the box by Aberdeen. Passive as ever in the director's box. Connected by a walkie-talkie to the bench. This is Boyd. Calm defending by Grant. Stay to O'Neill. That's Ian Jess back battling in defence in his new left midfield role. Tom Boyd's throw. Collins to the byline. Beaten away well by Stellars. But the Aberdeen defence was exposed there. Alec McLeish having a war with David Winnie about that. Patalanian going through the middle. Galloway did just enough. Good play by Galloway. Well, suddenly the pace of the game has lifted. And Coyne is onside this time. The Aberdeen defence is caught out there. This is Collins. McAvenny was offside the second time. But some good play again on the right from Celtic with John Collins making for the byline, giving a lot of space there, and that was very good goalkeeping by Snelders. Alec McLeish changing gear there to give himself extra time. Grant's head up, there's Winnie. Fearless one. Celtic in possession again with, with McStay. Challenge there by McNally on the battle line and penalised. McStay preventing the quick free kick. It'll have to be taken again. But if he hasn't authorised the ball being released, they shall take it. And Dubcek clearly jumping early for that. There's Sheeran, battle forcing the ball in, but let's look at this again as Fleish pumped the ball forward. Don't check, but challenge it up and well, the ball was in the air there. It was Sheeran hooked it back, Patalainen getting up for that. It broke kindly off the keeper's feet, and Patalainen knocks in his 12th goal of the season. Well, the irony is that Celtic were looking better and better at that spell, and suddenly they find themselves a goal behind.
Good play by McStay. Fine play from midfield. This is Slater. A very well-timed tackle by Stephen Wright. Some quality play now in evidence from both sides. That is Dubcek. Spinning back in play. Sheeta. Free kick there against Galloway. Put up that challenge on Sheeta. Stephen Wright's free kick. Mantelainen sends it towards Sheeta, but it's cut off by Dubcek. Take into Wright. Now Richardson. Other alterations have taken place in the Aberdeen tactical formation. Well, Sheeta said they appear to be sandwiched there. Boyd and McNally on each side of him. Leash to Aiken, who's now in the centre of midfield. Richardson's on the right. Reading against Slater, bit of handball, controlling the ball. But Richardson now playing wide on the right in the four-man midfield. Aiken joining Grant in the middle, Jess on the left. but he did a bit of claiming there, using his arm on Fairley, on McNally. Galloway's free kick. Up goes Evan. It's by Collins. This is Slater. McAvenny against Irvin. Breaks for Collins. Good footwork. He'll get ball for coin. Great goalkeeping by Stelders. But top-class, inventive play by John Collins created that chance. Tommy Coyne frustrated in the end, but this is wonderful play by Collins that his guy's pass is real top quality. Watch this as he comes inside, threatening to shoot, then playing that delicate ball beyond McLeish, and Snell to save the day for Aberdeen. Well, no luck for Celtic right on the half-time whistle. I think they'll feel slightly aggrieved to be going in. The interval, a goal behind, that goal delivered by Miksu Patelainen, five minutes from half-time. Ali McLeish sending in the long, high free kick, the ball broke on to the byline for Duncan Shearer to get back. Patelainen needed a couple of attempts to force the ball beyond Pat Bonner, but that's what makes the half-time score. Aberdeen 1, Celtic 0. Remarkably enough, in view of the accolades directed towards Aberdeen and the criticism directed towards Celtic, there's only four points between these two sides in the league at the start of this match, although Celtic had played a game more. It does reflect the expectations, I think, in particular with regard to Celtic. But they did play well in spells in that first half, and were, for my money, a shade unforced to go at half-time a goal behind. So they won't be despondent, I'm sure. But they will be concerned about their inability to find the net though. They tried all sorts of permutations. The latest is McIverney and Coyne. This is their fifth match together. They've managed to score three times during that spell. And they'll be looking to do something before the end of this match to turn the match Celtic's way. But Aberdeen. Good spell of form and results continuing at the moment. Well, they will have to be diligent and careful. That's a bad tackle and Collins is in trouble. David Winnie caught him high there. And the referee stopped the play. And David Winnie has it got a run of men like Tom Boyd. The squirting up off the ball. Well, Winnie was a shade high. I think that will be established from the replay. There was Collins going for the ball. In came Winnie. And the tackle with the left foot was high all right. It went over the ball and caught Collins. And he's in a lot of pain. Well, Winnie undoubtedly will claim he was going in strongly to play the ball. And the referee is content, I think, to restart the match with a drop ball. So he saw nothing wrong with the tackle. Collins, I'm sure, very relieved he was winning shin pads. Ball 
but he taught it suddenly. McNeese going in heavily on McAvenny. Oh, McNeese the ball, a shrinking violet when it gets physical. You see that free kick. McAvenny was the victim of the tackle. Galloway's free kick. Richardson turning that away. Well, Celtic undoubtedly fired up for the start of the game after the interval, and Aberdeen no doubt expecting that. Strong play again from Richardson. It's late in the middle of all that. The referee eventually brings that tussle to an end. Slater right in the middle of it all. I wonder what he makes of Premier Division football in Scotland after his lengthy spell at West Ham United. Richardson certainly adapting quickly after throwing the club from Blackburn Rovers. There's Duncan Shearer and he was almost there. Great anticipation shown by the striker as Mike Galloway set himself for the headed pass back. Shearer didn't stop at all, he anticipated that all right and was just about a stud length out of range. Scott Booth waits to come on to freshen up the Aberdeen attack. Applause for Shearer going off, and I wonder if there'd been a little recurrence of his injury problems. But Booth is an excellent replacement. One of four Aberdeen strikers to be in double figures this season. He scored ten. A high challenge by O'Neill on Winnie. David Winnie has certainly incurred the wrath of the Celtic players following that clash with Collins to start the second half. Not give any bank defending, that's Aiken, there's no offside here. Dubchek's header, goes straight to Richardson. That's fine play by Richardson. The long cross has to turn away by Boyd for the corner. Jess was coming in behind him. Great play this by Lee Richardson on the right flank for Aberdeen. A long cross to the far post. And boy took no chances. Fish with the target there. It's back to Jess. It's a great angle ball. And McNally did well to get his head to that for Celtic. A very good corner kick move that from Aberdeen. Mark McNally saved the day for Celtic inside the box. The driven, swerving ball from Jess. And it was McNally who got up there with Urban. Actually sending it through the middle. And there's Patalainen and Booth is through. It's a chance for Aberdeen second. Great goalkeeping by Bonner. Tremendous. Last ditch handling by Pat Bonner. Pat Alain had helped it on. Booth going across the bows of the defender Mike Galloway and it was closed down superbly by Bonner. The long ball overshoots the Celtic strikers. On Dubchek. It was Tommy Coyne. Grant did well against O'Neill. This is Jess. Well, he had that glimpse of goal and was determined to test Pat Bonner. He does strike the ball very well with both feet in Jess and looked up there before letting fly. So a view there of the Richard Donald stand contributing to this changing face of Pitodre. Donald, Dick Donald, better known as the long-serving chairman of Aberdeen, down to the stand there with the long view of the Merkled Road end. Headed away by Dubchek, that's McAvenny. Now Galloway. Coyne is going in behind right. Good recovery tackle by the fullback. Well, he may be a little bit concerned about the way in which he lost his man just for a second there. But the recovery was excellent. Disappointment for Coyne. For the corner to be taken by Stuart Slater. 
Kalkalainen doing a good defensive job in the air. Check doing well, but that was well read by Richardson. Stay getting across quickly to meet him. This is Slater. Stay to Galloway. Collins. Check. Thumped away by Stephen Wright, and now Celtic will make a substitution. The player coming on is Andy Payton. The man going off is Stuart Slater. Now Peyton, three quarters of a million pounds worth, goes on to replace 1.5 million pound, Stuart Slater. It looks as though Celtic are going to a 4-3-3 formation. Midfield three will be O'Neill, McStay and Collins, up front Peyton, McAvenny and Coyne. Good challenge by Grant. Here's Jess. That's great running by Ian Jess. He really is the outstanding young talent currently in the country. Coming from a long way back, chased by Tom Boyd, who's immensely quick. Mark McNally going across. Confident, skillful, powerful, and a very good effort at the end. Winnie. Matalainen now in the left midfield role, which was his position at the start of the game. It's Booth and Jess through the middle. An error of judgment there in the air by McLeish. It's unusual. Battalion. Booth. And Jess couldn't quite gather that as it came speeding towards him. Good play there by Coyne, twisting and turning, trying to get away from that right, but he has the quality of the fullback again. Was put to a severe test there and was equal to it. Coyne to Collins. Richardson made the tackle, but Collins survives. Good cross from Collins. Snelder's taking no chances with Peyton in below him. This is Tom Boyd. It's a very good cross. The equalizer from Andy Peyton. He's scarcely been on the field for two minutes. And that's a brilliant header to equalize and bring joy to those Celtic supporters. The goal coming in 74 minutes. It's very good delivery here by Tom Boyd. David Woody couldn't stop him sending over that excellent cross. The marking not good enough. Peyton's on his own. But the line didn't let him go. And Snelders was helpless. Oh, what a very good goal that was by Celtic. But the Aberdeen defending for once not well enough organised. There's Richardson. Up goes Patalainen. Beating the ball well by Boyd. Back with Grant. Irvin going in, there's McNally, and Winnie. Well, David Winnie beaten there by Tom Boyd for that equalising goal. And again, it really is ironical that Aberdeen scored after a good spell of Celtic play, and Celtic have done the same. But Aberdeen looked to be comfortable on the lead, suddenly. They've come right back on level terms. Andy Payton, greatly heartened by that. It's been a long time since he scored. That's his eighth of the season. Patalainen's header goes straight to Richardson. Off goes Jess. Well met by Lubchek. Here's Jess again. Looping in the cross. Playing very well by Bonner. Both sides now stepping up the pace. Looking for victory. Set the way forward by Irvin. Tackle came from right, playing the ball against Andy Payton. The 
first goal since the 12th of December. He scored against Dundee. Magavani, the interception by Irvin Richardson. Jess. That's good play from Aberdeen. Here's Brian Grant. Part the line and on the left. Tom Boyd closing him down. Goes in early. Grant sending it back. A shooting chance for Jess. And he works himself into these positions extremely well around the box, Ian Jess. Part the line and releasing the ball early. Brian Grant trying to make this easier for Jess with the pass. The youngster had to adjust his feet there. Well, a much happier occasion now for these Celtic supporters. The match did appear to be slipping away from them until that excellent equaliser was delivered by Andy Payton. Mike Evany sending it on. There's Payton. A first-time shot came from Coyne. Another good attacking move, and Alec McLeish is not at all happy with the marking. He's attacking some of his teammates. It's Roy Aiken who upset him there, I think, by not challenging McIverney well enough. But the line getting up well to that. That's good. Now well, he does that so well. He had no space at all. He was being very closely marked. And he still managed to control this well. Take it on the turn with McInally closing in on him. nor O'Neill could get on the end of that and another good match John Collins for Celtic the back heeler came from Coyne broke off right Collins was more determined there going for that <laughs> just got a touch on Top check playing it away from both yes. Grant with space for Aberdeen now he has Winnie going outside him Great return pass, careful tackle by Boyd. Had to make sure he didn't catch the man first there. Irvin sends it forward, there is no offside, here's Ian Jess. And McNally standing up well again, keeping his eye on the ball, turning at the safety. But the Lanyon wants to take this, get some length into the throw. Irvin goes loping forward. Back with Winnie. Turned away by Collins and retrieved by Richardson. Supported from behind by Grant. Irvin's dummy. Very good tackle by Paul McStay on Jess. Well, some very hopeful appeals for a penalty by the Aberdeen supporter. That appeared to be an excellent tackle by McStay. Superbly timed, and no complaint at all from Ian Jess. Peyton to Vata. And referee Douglas Hope adds on no time at all for injuries in the second half. Aberdeen have dropped a home point, but for Celtic it's been a crucial recovery. Mitsu Patalainen got the opening goal for Aberdeen in the first half, forcing the ball past Pat Bonner inside the six-yard box. Aberdeen appeared to be in good shape until Andy Payton appeared and bulleted home a header from Tom Boyd's cross. 16 minutes from the end, and I reckon over the piece the result is just about right. So the Celtic supporters much more encouraged by that overall performance. They've watched their team match Aberdeen, a form team in the Premier Division, so well throughout the afternoon. And in the end, I'm sure they'll go down the road.